Y la pregunta es la siguiente. Puede haber habido un momento, un instante infinitesimalmente pequeño en el que toda la energía, toda la masa, toda la materia estuviese en un elemento puntual y ese elemento puntual estallara. Estoy haciendo referencia al Big Bang. El Big Bang se hace multitud de partículas crea el universo en expansión y posiblemente no sé cuál sería su idea después de un retroceso con lo cual volveríamos a condensar toda la energía y toda la materia en ese otro punto nuevo y volvería a dar lugar a otro Big Bang quiere decir que posiblemente ha habido múltiples Big Bang ¿cuál es su opinión? Well, that's a very, that's a very interesting question. Uh, it's, there, actually, the, the current theory is that there were multiple Big Bangs, and that there are probably other universes out there. The problem with this whole point of view, uh, from my perspective, is that these other, these, these other universes are universes we cannot communicate with at all. There is no way that we can get any experimental information to either verify or to verify their existence or to, to measure any property of them. So while we can suppose that, it's, 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 it's getting somewhat out of the range of science. You see, science has to be really observational. And that's one of the, one of the great uh, perplexing questions. Because uh, if, you, if you talk to most theorists today, uh, they will say, oh yes, there are many, many universes out there, you know, possibly, possibly, you know, you're talking about incredibly large numbers, but the problem is how you can verify any such assertion. That, that's my, that's the problem. And I, I want to say, and there are two, there, there are two reasons that people uh, would like to have many, many uh, universes. Uh, in string theory, If you look at the possible solutions, there are, uh, there are possibly, you know, somebody said you had the number 10 to the 500 power solutions. Some people say infinite number of solutions. And so they say, well, every solution, and these solutions all have different fundamental constants. Because there, there seems to be nothing to pin down the fundamental constants in, in, in string theory at the present time. And so if you take that point of view, And then the point of view has been taken, well, in the inflationary model, uh, which I didn't have a chance to discuss with you because I just didn't have time, there was a period of time when, in the very early universe, when the expansion was enormously great. Uh, and there was accelerating expansion at that point. And, uh, and there was sort of frothing at the edges. And these edges broke off and bubbles broke off and they became sources of new universes. And so the, the combination of this sort of bubbling or frothing plus all these solutions have led theorists to say, well, there are probably all these universes out there, each of which has different fundamental constants. The fact that we exist uh, is only because for our universe, the fundamental constants are of such a nature that the atoms can exist. You know, yet if you change the fundamental constants, you get a situation where atoms can't exist because the forces are not right. And so this is called the entropic principle. And, the, and there's a big debate about, about that. You know, some physicists say, well, uh, the reason you have the entropic principle is because you can't create, you can't calculate properly. And others say, well, no, no, it seems to be more fundamental than that. So there's a big controversy in that. But the bottom line, from an experimentalist point of view, is that when you start talking about multiple universes that you cannot communicate with, you are getting more into the realm of metaphysics than physics. Because physics always should be something that allows you to get some observational uh, information that can either verify or falsify a, a, an assertion. Is that? Is that